Good evening and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. I am Craig. Well, if you watch my channel, you know that I'm a sailor and I want to learn how to live off the grid longer and more enjoyably. But whatever I show you today is just as applicable whether you're a sailor, a RVer, a camper, you live in an off-grid cottage, you live in a van down by the river, or you're a doomsday prepper. All of us need to learn how to produce electricity, store electricity, convert it into the watts, amps, and volts that you need to use it properly, and do that efficiently, and then repeat the cycle over and over, day after day, into perpetuity. Potentially living off the grid forever, which is what we would all love to do. Definitely would lower our utility bills. So, we've talked in pre previous episodes about various solar panels, both glass and folding. We've talked in previous episodes about lithium iron phosphate batteries. And today we're going to continue with lithium iron phosphate, but a bigger version of it. As you've seen, I've done the 100 amp hour Rododo. Now we're going to do a 200 amp hour uh, Rododo. Now, just so you know, I have experience with this battery. Not the Rododo. It was called Zooms back then. I've had it for the past two seasons. I'm now going into my third sailing season where this battery is my house bank battery. Um, it's been amazing. Way, way above my expectations. I came from four, oh, I don't even like picking this thing up. Oh, four of these lead acid batteries, which weighs 55 pounds each. Ugh. I'm gonna break my glass table. Anyways, I had four of those. I replaced it with one 200 amp hour battery and it felt like magic. It honestly felt like magic because with the lead acid, I always had, I don't know, range anxiety, <laughs> capacity anxiety. I was always checking it. like. How close to 50% is it? Because with a lead acid, you cannot go below 50% of its rated capacity or you start damaging the battery. I would run things with my lead acid and it would always be heading towards 50% very quickly, especially if we got a rainy day, not a lot of solar and all that. So I was always checking the battery, checking the battery, checking the battery. When I got this in there, I'd do the same thing. Every, the same stuff was running, my fridge, my secondary fridge, my laptop, my every, other things all running, same as always. I kept going to the battery. Barely moved down, barely moved down, barely moved down. I'm like, this thing's magic. <laughs> it really is a, like light years ahead of lead acid. If you're a boater or RVer, or you live in that cottage off the grid and you have a battery bank system that's lead acid, get rid of it, seriously. Doesn't matter if you think it still has some life left in it, get rid of it, you will be thanking me so much. So, this Rododo is exactly like my Zooms in every way. It looks the same, same color, white body, gray lid. It was funny because in the, in the kind of like the multicolored color scheme, and I was like, well, that looks like a lot like my battery. And then I talked to the Rodoto people who sent me this and they said, that is the same company. They just rebranded to Rodoto. So there you go. So I feel like I already know this battery. This is just a brand new one that they sent me to review. I have not been paid. This is not an advertisement. They did not tell me what to say. I'm just to test it and give my honest opinion. And if you watch my other episodes, if a product is sent to me and is great, I will tell you it's great. I will try and find the flaws, although with a battery that doesn't have any extra bells or whistles, it's kind of hard to find flaws if it meets its capacity rating. But in other things, I've done uh, solar generators and stuff, and I will find, you know, sometimes nitpicky things, but sometimes more important things that really kind of disappointed me. So I try and do the pros and the cons. Um, I'll try and do that with this, but I know with batteries, it is often tough to come up with a con if it meets its capacity. So let's go through some of the features of this lithium iron phosphate. It has... Obviously, lithium iron phosphate is different than what's called lithium ion. So my laptop here has a lithium ion battery. Your cell phone has a lithium ion battery. You've often heard about cell phones catching on fire when they're charging and whatnot. That is a flaw of the lithium ion type of battery. This is lithium iron phosphate, totally different technology. It's heavier than a lithium ion battery, but it has a lot of great features. As opposed to a lithium ion battery, which might have four or five hundred cycles in it, which means completely empty to completely full four to five hundred times. If you own a phone for a lot of years, you're going to notice that after a while, you feel like you got to constantly keep charging it because it's dying quicker and quicker and quicker. That's that whole, as you're getting towards the end of its life cycle, it can't hold a charge as well. These batteries can do 4,000 plus charges. And we're talking full from to completely empty to completely full is considered one cycle. You can do that 4,000 times, which is insane. Like you're gonna have this thing for well over a decade because 4,000 cycles, unless you're running this dead every single day and then charging it full every single day, it's gonna be pretty hard to get through that. The ABS plastic might actually start decaying before the actual cells stop working. Oh, and I should say when you get to that 4,000 cycles plus, 
It's not that this all of a sudden becomes a brick and unusable. It just means the capacity has gone from 100% where it came from from the factory down to 80%. So you can still easily use this battery. Now you can put these in 4S, 4P, which means four in series, four in parallel. I'll put that on the screen, a little diagram of what that means. And that means you can actually make an 800 amp hour battery. If you just did four in parallel, no series, just four in parallel, you would have an 800 amp hour 12 volt, or they usually run around 13 volt, um, 13 point something volt uh, battery system. That's pretty damn amazing. Like I don't need 800 amp hours in my sailboat. <laughs> if I had a bigger sailboat, yes, but in the sailboat I have now, a 35 footer, the 200's done me fine. When I'm done testing this, I already know what the ratings are. I've already tested this, so I know it's gonna surpass its rating. But when I'm done doing this review, this is gonna get added to my boat in parallel to make a 400 amp hour battery. And I, I, I could might as well just run everything full blast all the time because I'm gonna have more than enough battery capacity. The nice thing about that is when you have extra solar on top of what I already have built onto my boat, extra folding solar, on a sunny day at Anchorage, you can just whip out all the extra solar charge your massive battery bank and then not worry at all even if the forecast says three straight days of rain dark gloomy doesn't matter you're gonna have tons of battery capacity on your boat or rv rvs always have the same principles as boats that's why they're called land yachts for rvs because they're just like a motor yacht or a sailboat uh, that uh, lives off of battery power when the engine's not running so there you go okay so just to go into the specs you can go to redotopower.com there's also a Canadian version, I'm from Canada, so there's a Canadian version. Right now on the American version, this exact model, the basic Rododo 200 amp hour is $599, slightly on sale right now. I'm probably gonna give you some um, affiliate codes down below that will give you an extra discount, so go check that out in the description down below. But going through their website, some of the features that you are gonna wanna know is, well, this, they give you the dimensions. It's 21 inches wide, uh, 8.5 inches tall, 8.2 inches deep. So if you have a space in your RV or boat and you want to make sure those are the dimensions, again, it's on the website. The one thing they want to show you too is these are M8 terminals with extremely long bolts, which is good because if you're going to put these uh, multiple in parallel and you're going to add other things coming off of it as well, you want to have enough room. There's two washers here. You can pop two washers if you need all of that stem. Uh, the washers are just there for spacers so that you can tighten it down. If you only have one wire, uh, you want to make sure that there's enough space there for you to clamp it down tight. And they're saying that they are silver plated copper terminals. The, they're, this is weather sealed, another thing I should mention. So you, if you were leaving this outside and it got rained on, it will not make a difference. It also, I should also mention this, these are sealed batteries. Unlike the lead acid where fumes comes out, there's no fumes coming out of this. You can charge this straight up and down like a normal battery. You can put it on its side. Theoretically, if you wanted to, you can flip it upside down and charge it that way. It doesn't matter. There's no fluid that's gonna leak out. There's no fumes, which is a godsend because I used to have my lead acid batteries under my main bed. And if it was super sunny and we were really tr uh, cranking in the juice from the solar panels, there would actually be fumes that would come off the battery and I would get a headache. And it's a sm a sm almost a smellless fumes because I would just get a headache and I didn't know why. And then I remembered about the, uh, the gaseous fumes that comes off lead acid batteries. Now we're just talking about capacity. It's 2,560 watts hours, watt hours. 200 amp hours, or said another way, 2,560 watt hours. And a lot of times people like to think in watts because they know how many watts something is. I have this Bouge RV fridge here. Oh, I'll bring it over if I can get it in the screen. Bouge RV fridge. I've run this thing. I'll give you a little screen grab of it. It takes 27 to 30 watts to run this 50 three quart fridge. So if you have that kind of fridge where you have a cigarette adapter like this one does, then you can, you can buy yourself a little alligator clip to a cigarette adapter, plug this directly into here without even needing an inverter and run your DC fridge off of your DC battery. This little screen grab on their website says they can run a hundred amp fridge for 25 hours. Well, this is a 27 watt to 30 watts. When it first starts up, it's about 30, but as it gets colder, it drops to about 27 watts. So if a 100 watt fridge could go for 25 hours, this could go for, this Bouge RV could go for about 75 hours. I wouldn't even be surprised if it's more than that because they're using a 100 watt fridge, meaning they're pretending that they're plugging this into an inverter and then plugging a normal AC fridge into it. And there's always some degradation or loss between DC power and AC power when you run it through an inverter. So they're probably underrepresenting how many hours a DC fridge could actually run. If you're on a boat or an RV, oftentimes the fridge that's built into your boat is a DC fridge, not an AC fridge.
Now they're just talking about the battery management system, things like overcurrent protection, overcharge protection, over discharge protection, short circuit protection, and thermal protection. Meaning that if this thing falls below zero degrees Celsius, it will not allow the battery to be charged. The battery management system will actually shut that off. That is the one and only drawback of a lithium iron phosphate over a lead acid. These don't like being charged under freezing. Now granted, these things give off a little bit of heat when they're being charged and discharged. So if you did have this in an uninsulated, like a shed, all I would suggest is you build a box around it with some foam insulation and you house it inside this foam thing. Cause it, again, it doesn't need to breathe. There's no venting and then charge it in there. It'll, it'll store the heat when it's uh, not being used. When the sun's not out, it's not getting charged. There's not going to be any heat generation. And if you're not putting a draw on it, there won't be heat generation. But if you pack it in insulation, it should be fine. Because like I said, between the daylight with the sun and the usage of whatever you're char charging, uh, running off of it, there should be some heat generated. But just so you know, don't leave this in your backyard if you live in Canada, <laughs> minus 20, and then plug some solar panel into it and expect it to charge. The battery management system will not allow it to be charged. The next thing is they're talking about grade A cells in this. Now, they're just showing that you see the circular cells at the top. Those are those 18650 batteries, these type of batteries. Some lithium batteries, especially lithium ion, are really just tons and tons of these packed inside a battery. That's really not the efficient way to do it. They've got these square lithium iron phosphate banks that they say are 2P4S, uh, there's eight pieces, and that's how they do it. it. Gives it a higher energy density of 53 watt hours per pound versus a standard lithium battery is more like 41 watt hours per pound. In other words, this is much lighter. This thing weighs 48 pounds, which is less than one 100 amp hour lead acid deep cycle battery. Crazy, that's a dinosaur technology if I've ever seen it, so heavy. Leaks fluid, ruins my clothes, gives off fumes, giving me a headache. Again, do yourself a favor, throw out your lead acid batteries. And I think I've mentioned this before, their BMS also has a 100 amp discharge and charge rate. So, and that's per battery. So if you put four in parallel, you actually have 400 amp hour out and in sort of thing. So it's per battery. And this is just showing you how you can go in a, a maximum of a 4S, 4P uh, configuration, which means you've got four batteries in parallel, giving that 800 amp hours. Four in series means the volts go from 12, 24, 36, 48. And they say it should be should end at 48, but they're calling it 51.2 because lithium iron phosphate batteries don't really run at 12 volts even. They run at around 13 point something volts. So when you multiply all those batteries times 13 volts, it comes out to 51.2 watt uh, volts, uh, 800 amp hours for a total of 40.96 kilowatt hours. You can run your entire house off that. Now granted, if you have a battery bank that big, you need to have a hell of a lot of solar panels on your roof to uh, fully charge this every single day. Or if you live out in the rural area, you could have one of those, you know, f ones built in the field, the big standing structure with solar panels. But then again, that can be done with these batteries just as well as those ones that are kind of like the dedicated rack mounted ones that you often see in people that build the big system. But you could do it with this if this is actually cheaper for you. And lastly, they have warehouses both here in Canada and in the States close by. They say they can deliver these in one to three working days. They say there's no shipping and they have a five year warranty. So there you go. That's pretty much everything. Now let's just get to my, uh, my results. Is when I got it from the factory, I did my readings on this. It comes exactly where it should be from the factory. It came about 70% charged, which is about 13.2 or 13.3 volts. Then I fully charge it with a smart charger that has got a lithium iron phosphate setting. You should do that. I used to have one that was like a smart charger, but never said what type of battery it was charging. I don't really trust it. These are very inexpensive on Amazon. Maybe I'll even put the link for this thing. Um, I set it to the highest setting, which is a 10 amp charge. And believe me, it takes a while to charge a 200 amp hour battery. And then what takes even longer is I have a DC load tester. You have little dials here that you say how many amps you want it to uh, discharge at. I picked a little over nine amps, which I think is about 110 watts, 110, 120 watts consistently. And believe me, a 200 amp hour battery takes a long time to discharge. But I'll show you on the screen the final results of how many hours it took and how many uh, amp hours was the net result when it finally, when the BMS finally shut it off. And that's again what I mentioned before, the BMS 
will not let it go below a certain volt. So when you get down to, I think about 10.6 or whatever the load number is, the BMS will just shut it off. So you will not damage this battery at all if you put a load on it and just walk away and let it die. It's not hurting the battery like it would when you had lead acid. Okay, it was exhausted at 209.35 amp hours, which is more than the rated 200 amp hours, which is really good. And that was at a nine amp draw. I did that twice and both times it rated over the 200 amp hour battery. I found the same thing when I did the 100 amp hour Rododo. They always are over capacity every single time I've ever dealt with uh, Rododo products. Um, so yeah, that's all I can really say about a basic battery. There is a smarter version. There are ones with Bluetooth and other things that you can get on an app and check its what, what power is going in, what draws going out and all these other things. Almost like, an, uh, almost like a solar generator, but this is just the basic one. This is the one they sent me. If you just want a house bank for your boat or RV, you're probably not gonna be playing on the app to see how it is and see what's going on. I mean, it's fun for the first day or two, but once it's been working day after day after day, you probably won't even look at that app ever again. This one will save you money over their, what's more called pro version, plus version they call it. Um, so yeah, if you just need a battery, best bang for the buck is the basic one. If you want extra bells and whistles, and you can go for the plus version. Again, go to the website and you can choose for yourself which one suits your needs the best. So that's it. I give the Rodoto a two thumbs up. I would love to find something to criticize here, but it really is solidly built. Um, it's water protected, water sealed, big bolts for attaching a ton of wires. What can you really complain about? Really, really? I'd love to find something so I don't seem like I'm a complete shill for the company, which I'm not, but can't find anything wrong with it. So there you go. So hopefully you found this informative. If so, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more of this type of content. And soon, I'm going to be in the sailing season, I'm going to be talking a lot more about how I wired this into my boat and um, a little bit of my setup. My various solar generators. You've seen me talk about my Blue Eddy AC200 Max, which I'm going to love because it has a 30 amp out for my boat so I can plug my shore power cord directly into my Blue Eddy and run my water heater or whatever so I can have showers even when I'm in Anchorage and blah, 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 blah. I also have the mid-sized one down here and I have this new 3BA from Blue Eddy that I'm testing right now. I'm gonna do a video on that as well. And supposedly I have a larger Blue Eddy. This is a 200 watt Blue Eddy that I already have done a review of. I'm gonna review the 350 watt version, which is gonna be a beast, huge when it un unfold it. I'm, my question on that is, is that even going to fit? Not this one. Is the bigger one even going to fit on my boat on the deck? I guess if the side of my boat is facing the sun and I rolled it from the bow to the stern out and angled it and got bungee cords and got it at the right angle, I guess I could actually use it. Well, it might look ridiculous, but I guess we'll have to see when that shows up. So until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising. <laughs>